Hi everybody, this is Jeanette from Body Glass Sewing and Crafts. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to explore puff embroidering. Um, puff embroidering is when you are embroidering on like hats or you can actually embroider other stuff too. But one of the things that puff embroidery is, is when your embroidery is raised, okay? It kind of like gives it like a 3D effect. And the way you do that is you go and you use something called puffy foam, okay? Puffy foam is um, really cool. I bought a pack uh, from Amazon, different colors, okay? This is the two millimeter. You can also get this one in three millimeter. And I'll put this in my Amazon shop. But this is like really, really cool because I was look, you know, trying to research this and I found that what folks are doing is they put this foam while, you know, it's the same concept as applique. But the thing is you put the foam on the item and the, in, the stitches of the embroidery file goes on top of it and it gives it a 3D effect. However, there is something that I do want to caution you. You have to get puff embroidery files, okay? You can try it if you want to see if this will work on regular files. I don't think it will because when a digitizer goes ahead and creates an embroidery file, they're usually creating it so that it can go on a flat surface. And that's why when you look at your stitches, you see that they're Pacific length because they're not accounting for any type of foam to go underneath these stitches. All they're, um, they're thinking about when they're creating these, um, these type of files is that the, you know, the stitches are going to go on a flat surface. Now with puff embroidery, it's not, this is not the case. What it is, is you're going to be putting this foam and you're going to be putting it on your item and the embroidery file is going to be putting the stitches over this foam. So that way it can give it that 3D effect, okay? So you have to get files that are 3D, okay? So I went on um, and I purchased some uh, embroidery files and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this out this is the first time I'm doing this so this is a sink and swim video okay but um I purchased a set of fonts that are 3d excuse excuse mellow and stuff he's here and he's looking for his ball underneath the machine so anyway um this is a 3d font and I'm just gonna put uh jw on a baseball hat now, you know, there's two types of baseball hats. There's a structured and an unstructured. I'm going to try to do this on an unstructured. I think it'll probably be easier to do if I do it on a structured hat, but I'm up for the challenge. So let's see what happens. Now, for those that don't know what a structured and an unstructured hat is, a structured hat is a hat that has mesh inside of it to help the, the hat keep its shape. And this is a structured one. If you look inside of your hat, you'll see that there's like some kind of hard coating inside. It looks kind of meshy, and that is called structure. Now, unstructured doesn't have that. What it does is it's just the plain hat, okay? Um, this, let me get this out of here. It's just the plain hat. You can see it's just the fabric, the same fabric that's around the whole hat. Um, usually, you know, some people, you know, it's just a preference. Some people prefer the unstructured hat. They just like it laying on their head and stuff. And some people just like the structured. So, you know, it's just a preference and stuff. But just wanted to let you know what the difference is. So I already saved this on a file, okay? And I already have my, um, my hat hooped on a machine. And I'm going to take you over here so that way you can see and as you can see, Mello is looking at neighbors and stuff like that. So I am going to set the machine up so that way we can watch how this whole process works. Okay, guys, so here we are. I am at the multi-needle machine. I already have my hat already hooped and I have my file already put in. What I'm gonna do is I just switch up the colors from what you saw previously on the screen. I'm using um, red. And I'm using white because it's a black hat. And I think it's going to come out really, really nice on that. Um, one of the things that I did, I already threaded and stuff. I think this would actually be easier to do on a structured hat. But I just want to see what happens if I use this on an unstructured hat. Okay. So I'm going to be using the red foam. All right. So that I can put the S and the W. I mean the S. The J and the W on here. If you 
have a single needle machine that has a flatbed, don't think that you are limited and you cannot do this. You can do this. Just like you go and you put your hat on the embroidery on a fat on a flatbed, you can definitely do this on, on a SC1900 or any other single needle machine as well. So I'm gonna start the machine um, and I'm going to see, let's see what happens, okay? This shouldn't take long because I only chose two letters. So I just wanna see how it would embroider. So right now what it's doing, it's doing the letter J. I can tell it's the it's the um, outline and let me move the camera a little closer so that way you guys can actually see the whole process Wrinkly. Oh, okay. It's gonna start the red, and I already see this isn't gonna work. But I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the process so that you guys can see what this looks like. So this is an unstructured hat. So I don't think that this probably works very well with unstructured hats. Now it's going to do the red. So I am just going to put the foam on top, and then um, I'm gonna kind of. Hold it so that way it, it can snag, but let's see what happens. I mean, I'm just gonna keep the thing. I mean, if this ends up being a mistake, it ends up being a mistake. That's how, that's how we all learn, right? So, this can be a, a perfect example of what not to do when trying puff and watery. And as you can see, this is very similar to doing applique. You know, um, remember you put your fabric down, you 
you know, it's like the tack down stitching. But it's kind of like tack down with satin stitch. So I'm going to finish this whole hat and, and see how, what it looks like. starts the other one I'm going to and let me move this over so that you can see what it looks like okay let me put you a little closer here sorry guys got my little tripod so let me see I'm going to take this off and I'm going to see how it looks yeah it's not good with unstructured because as you can see look I'm all over the place I'm all over the place. However, though, you can see that it jumped. So this is not, this is, this is, has nothing to do with, um, puff not working. This is, this is really me. This is me not, not hooping the hat correctly. Um, so it looks kind of funky. So I don't want to waste any more threads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up hats and I'm going to put a structured hat and let's see how that goes. Okay. Cause I don't want to waste any more. Um, let me take it out so that you can see it up, up close. Um, let's take a look at this. All right, so that you can see it, it is it is raised. Okay. It is raised. Um, it just, because it's not hooped, it wasn't, you know, stable. See how it, it's off? Right here and here just didn't come out right. But let's let's try a, another hat and let's see. Because I think structured hat is probably the way to go. Okay, everybody. Um, I am back. I have on here now a structured hat. As you can see, this is harder. Okay, so this is structured. And um, let me also... I'm, gonna, I'm grabbing some, some clips here. Um, I'm also going to, which I didn't do on the unstructured hat, which maybe I should have. And let me tell you something, unstructured hats are much easier to do on a single needle machine than on a multi-needle machine, in my opinion. For the simple fact that you can actually um, help the fabric along so that it doesn't uh, get, you know, um, it doesn't shift. And as you can see, I think that's what happened with that one. It's, it's an unstructured, unless, you know, I mean, there's there's lots of ways to embroider on a hat, but, you know, I like using my hat hoops and stuff. Okay, so here it is. This is structured. As you can see, it's a little harder, so it should be a little better. I have my new foam. Um, I did change my colors a little bit. Um, it's going to be black on the outside, red on the inside. So I'm going to hit the, the go button, and let's see what happens now. Okay. So here it is with the black. And as you can see, it's a little more sturdier. And I already 
like the way it's coming out. starts with the red I'm going to place the foam okay and it's going to be the color color red so I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to start the machine and of course be very careful with your fingers you don't want to get like caught or anything and you want to make sure just like when you do applique you cover the whole thing the whole outline that you're supposed to cover okay so I'm just going to hold it a little bit until it kind of like really grabs and I'm not putting any pressure on the hat. All I'm doing is just holding the foam. And I feel it's wrapped it enough, so I'm good. I feel like it shifted a little bit. I wonder if I should have taped it down. Yeah. 
And I slowed down my machine also, for those that are curious. I slowed it down. Um, I'm a slow sewer. So, it's not, it's not doing the full speed. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm going to stop the machine. Before it does the W, I'm going to stop the machine. And here you have the J. I'm going to pull this off and let's take a look and see what the final product is, what it looks like. Um, as you can see, it peels off pretty nicely. And oh my God. Oh, wow. This is really, this is amazing. Okay, I have like a little thread that I should cut here. This is amazing. Um, oh my God. All right. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna keep going because this is this really looks good. This this is good. I like it. I'm gonna keep going. It's doing the black. This is really this looks really nice. I got a couple of thread. You know how I take care of that? Scotch tape. Take some scotch tape, put it against that, and it's going to lift up all that extra thread that made on the hat. Sorry about that. That mellow back in the room. He was crying.
two letters on this hat is about 15 minutes. So, you know, I did a video, uh, a happy hour. I think last happy hour was uh, pricing. So you would take your amount of how much you charge per hour and that would be 15 minutes of that amount. Plus the hat, hooping the hat, the price of the foam, thread. This is about 7489 So I would do like, if it's a dollar a stick, a, a dollar per thousand, that's $7. For the thread, probably do 10 cents for this. If you want to add a hoopy fee, the price of the hat plus your time. That's how much you would charge for this hat. So I would have to calculate all that. But um, Even if I didn't put the um the, the puffer thing, this is a beautiful font just as it is. Alright, I'm just gonna leave that here. It's covering the whole thing. But now it's doing the red. I keep thinking that the foam is going to fall off. So I don't know if people actually like... Tape it down or not, but it seems to be holding okay. And I have plenty of... on top but it's like a mystery because you really don't know how the product is going to look until you peel off the foam so I'm pretty like excited about this whole thing so and I'm just going to take the whole process start to finish you can even you know when I close this I'm even going to leave the, the oops in there so that way you guys can see what I did you know, I really love it when people learn from other people's mistakes. Oh, I can't wait to show my son. He's going to love it. He'll probably want one that says BTU on it, you know, for college or his initials. It'll probably give it a more uh, 3D look. It'll pop out even more. Done. It's 
exciting. You always got to be careful when you're removing your hat hoop. Okay, awesome. And let me go behind here. I'm going to peel this off. Oh my God, it comes out so easy too, guys. <gasps> wow. Wow, look at this. This is nice. This is nice, guys. Look at that. 3D. 3D effect. See how it puffs up? Came out beautiful. Came out beautiful. Let me take this out. Let me take it out of the hat hoop, okay? You guys can see. Oh my God. This is like gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. See all the stuff you have to put on a hat? That's why hats are expensive when you ask for people to embroider them. Wow. All right, hold on. Coming back with the hat. I'm coming back with the hat. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. I just got to clean this up. Put the sweatband back in. Here's the thing. Structured 3D. And I think I'm going to buy the bigger foam. And it'll pop out more. Just got to clean it up a bit. Bet you if I take a lighter and go, it should probably come out. But, oh God, this came out really nice. But, oh no, because then I don't want to mess up the white. But, my God, it's still beautiful. I just have to take tape and get rid of that. So anyway, guys, that is Puff Embroidery. Okay, hope you guys like the video. Give it a thumbs up. I am going to leave the mistake in there because you know what? I mean, my, my channel is all about teaching. And, you know, if I make a mistake, I, I want you guys to see it because, hey, you know, we all mess up and you guys can learn from me. So um, I my recommendation, you know, I did. I did. In, in all honesty, hoop that very sloppy, the non-structured hat, okay? I did. So, because I hooped it, as you can see, sewed certain parts together. So, that came out kind of tacky, but big difference. Big difference. Very, very huge. Look at that. Beautiful, nice, clean, gorgeous, and uh, shady. Okay, so... <laughs> So guys, I hope you like this video and um, you guys learned about puff embroidery. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I'm all about teaching folks about sewing, embroidering, and different other crafts and stuff. And join me on Fridays at 8 o'clock, um, you know, Standard Eastern Time. I do embroidery happy hour every Friday. I always like to share my, you know, whatever I learned and whatever I did during the week. And answer questions about embroidery and stuff. And if you're, you know, if you're looking for a great um, Facebook group, I have Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures on Facebook. So please join that as well. But um, guys, this is called Puff Embroidery. So really, really cool. Like it. It makes your products really, really um, pop out. So hope you liked it. Have a great day. Bye.